When I hear AAA video game, I think of stuff like this. Like AAA video game? Oh, you mean this type of game, right? AAA level. Mm -hmm. God of War Ragnarok is the rarest type of AAA video game in that it actually is a really good video game. In the first hour of this game, you race out of a collapsing forest on a dog sled, then you fight a giant bear, and then you fight Thor. That is how you do a fucking video game. Since the last God of War came out in 2018, there have been a lot of great action games. Games like Sekiro, Devil May Cry, Katana Zero, Neo 2, Hades, Metroid Dread, Elden Ring. Just two weeks ago, I was playing Bayonetta 3. God of War has never been Tekken, okay? But Ragnarok subtly builds on a foundation which has aged pretty gracefully in the face of such heavy competition. The key word in describing Ragnarok's combat is balance. It's challenging but not unfair. It's flashy without taking control from the player. It's simplistic but still lets you get a little fancy. Now watch this. I'm gonna hit this man with the Looney Tunes surprise. Where'd the floor go? One of my biggest criticisms of The Last God of War is how it would recycle a lot of its mini-bosses. This game does not do that. This game, woo, you know Funko Land? These guys went to Funko Land on these bosses. I went into this game expecting the sequel to God of War, but really what we got here is the sequel to God of War and then the sequel to that game. Ragnarok is God of War 2 and 3 in one game. That's how many crazy boss fights are in this. My favorite boss, I don't want to spoil it, but your goal is to break a big cauldron. If there's one obvious flaw with God of War's gameplay, it's the traversal. It sucks. You look at other Sony games like Spider-Man and Ratchet and & Clank, and those games traversal is just as good if not better than the combat. But what makes God of War special is how it marries fun combat with engaging storytelling. Right from its opening shot, Ragnarok masterfully draws you back into its world with incredible acting performances. There's a much heavier emphasis this time on building up the world of God of War. There's a lot of side quests and lore to uncover, but for me, the most fulfilling part is just soaking in these beautiful environments. There is more artistry in some of God of War's doors than there is in entire video games. The sandy tempest of Elfheim, obscure lantern-lit bones of a mammoth creature, beams of moonlight peer through the leaves of a gungle tree in Mufokin. Heat seems to ooze out of the screen in the bubbling pits of Lava Lava Island from Mario 64. There are so many creatures and little details everywhere in this game that sometimes you just have to stop and say it all. Yes, this is the 700th open world game where you lead a rebel force against a tyrannical dictatorship. You've seen this story before, but you've never seen it executed on this level before. This is big budget blockbuster entertainment with little interest in rehashing the previous game's story. There is some dialogue that'll make you groan. Everything's okay, right? Yeah, I'm just in a magical force that shouldn't exist. Talking to another giant and she's... Boy. The scope of this game is much wider than the original, bringing back the original cast while introducing many, many new faces like Angra Boba, Tyr, Amir, Mimir, Finmir, Munkle, Mumra, and a funny squirrel guy that I like. Simply throw your axe and strike the chimes and I will attend to your needs. I am already here, Master Kratos. Perhaps there was some confusion. This is for calling me out here, not for when I am here. Do you just like hearing the sound of the chime? In the last game, the plot was to take the mom's ashes up a mountain. In this game, the plot, it, I give up, you definitely lose that simplicity and focus from the last game, but there's a new kind of fun in trying to detangle such a massive web of characters. Kratos? Snack? I do not need a snack. Ragnarok is Dr. Phil's greatest episode. It's a story about three fathers, three mothers, and three children. Two parents want to shelter their children. Another two are depressed because their sons got killed by the other dad. Then there's the fun dad. He's the most evil one of them all. After the game, Loki is impregnated by a horse. That's what it says on Wikipedia. <laughs> Fuck. With so many characters taking the stage, it's a miracle that it doesn't collapse. It's a very segmented story with a lot of video gamey distractions in between. Destroy four rat nests. But just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in. <laughs>
While it all hinges on this massive battle, the story unfolds more like an intimate mystery, giving its incredible cast many scenes to flex their acting muscles. Just like The Matrix, God of War Ragnarok is a technologically advanced thrill ride where rebelling against prophecy only seems to seal your fate. It may not be high art, but it is definitely high entertainment, showcasing many, many talents at the peak of their powers. This game will surprise you, it'll make you laugh, it might even make you tear up, and it will keep your hands glued to the controller all the way into its action-packed finale. When the credits finally rolled on this massive conquest, there was only one thing I could say. God damn. I... You're deliberately attempting to push me into some sort of emotional outburst, aren't you? Well, I'm not so easily swayed, my good man. Stop! Stupid chime! Oh, oh dear. I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from.